Hello and welcome to my channel. This video is going to be about treating osteoporosis with medications. Made easy. Before watching this video, unless you already understand osteoporosis, I recommend watching my other video covering the subject. The link will be in the description. There, I discuss what causes osteoporosis and how it is diagnosed. Also, in another video, I go over the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis besides the medications. But really quickly, the idea of osteoporosis is that we are losing bone, and as a result, the bones become more porous, as shown here. Porous bone is fragile bone. Fragile bone is at high risk of breaking, and broken bones are no bueno. When it comes to prescribing medications for osteoporosis, your doctor is going to be thinking about the chances of you breaking a bone. There are two tools doctors use to make this decision. One is the Fracture Risk Assessment Survey, as shown here. The second is the DEXA scan, which is an x-ray shown here. Here are three results that will make your doctor recommend medications. If the DEXA scan shows a T-score less than negative 2.5, a 10-year risk greater than 20% for a major bone fracture, or 3% for hip fracture. And last, if you have already fractured your hip from falling at a standing height. Now, let's discuss the available medications. First, we will cover the group of medications called bisphosphonates. These medications have the suffix dronate. We have two cells that involve bone. One is the osteoblasts, which build bone, and osteoclasts, which cleave bone. Real quick, you will find that each medication, in some way, influences our osteoblasts or our osteoclasts, or both. Now then, the main cause of osteoporosis involves creating an imbalance between the two that ends up favoring osteoclasts. This results in osteoclasts having more time with our bones and weakening them. Here's the thing, in order for osteoclasts to interact with the bone, they have to bind. Now let's bring in bisphosphonates. Bisphosphonates interrupt the ability of osteoclasts to bind to the bone, thus disrupting their effects. Also, they cause osteoclast cells to die. Here's what's good. They're cheap, have been around for over 20 years, and so they're well understood. And the treatment lasts 5 years. What's bad is that they damage the esophagus and the kidneys. Now, damage to the esophagus happens when we take bisphosphonates orally. If we inject them IV, then we avoid damaging the esophagus. Having them injected is pricier, but still a relatively cheaper treatment compared to those we will discuss later. Also, a nurse has to administer them, and there's always a risk of infection with any needle stick. Next, we have the anabolic agents. These are injected under the skin as opposed to into a vein. They have the strongest effect, and they also don't injure any of our organs. The cons are, they are expensive, need to be injected, depending on the specific agent, some aren't two years old yet. Also, depending on the specific agent, some still require bisphosphonate treatment. Let's go into greater detail with the anabolic agents. The first one we'll cover is denosumab. Their influence is on osteoclasts. The idea is that there are chemicals in the body that increase osteoclast activity. Denosumab comes in and prevents that from happening. Next, we have teriparatide and abaloparatide. Their influence is on osteoblasts. The way they work is by copying hormones in our body that affect osteoblasts. For teriparatide, it is parathyroid hormone. For abaloparatide, it's parathyroid-related hormone. Now, if you've watched my prior video, 
then you might remember that these two hormones can increase osteoclast activity as well. The actions of these two hormones change depending on the duration of their presence. In short bursts, they increase osteoblast activity. In prolonged durations, they increase osteoclast activity. One thing that's unfortunate is that these two medications need to be injected daily compared to our next medication, Romozozumab, which is injected monthly. Romozozumab increases osteoblast activity. The idea is that there are chemicals in the body that decreases osteoblast activity. Romozozumab comes in and prevents that from happening. We are done with the anabolic agents. I made this list that covers some of the pros and cons with each one. I want to note though that since Romozozumab was FDA approved two years ago, its long-term side effects are uncertain. Two more and we're finished. Estrogen. It increases osteoblast activity and decreases osteoclast activity. We have a medication called raloxifene that acts like estrogen. Real quick, testosterone supplementation is also used for treatment for men, but only if the man has a testosterone level less than 200. One pro with raloxifene is that it can prevent breast cancer, which is helpful in certain populations. The cons are not as effective as other medications for restoring bone, hasn't proven useful in preventing specifically hip fractures, causes hot flashes, and increases the risk for blood clots in the leg. Last, we have the thiocide medications. These are medications for blood pressure, but can help out with osteoporosis. The reason is that they cause calcium in the urine to be reabsorbed into the bloodstream, preventing some of the body's calcium from being peed out. The thiocyte medications lower a person's blood pressure, which is helpful for patients with high blood pressure. The cons are that they can't be taken by people with diabetes, high cholesterol, or gout. Research has shown that using more than one medication at once doesn't help much, or at least doesn't justify the extra side effects and financial costs. Once you've been put on medications, your doctor may want to make sure the medications are working. Some people may not absorb the medications as well as others. Your doctor will do this by measuring some chemicals in your blood for changes. In addition, your doctor will see how your bones are doing with a DEXA scan one to two years after starting. If the person's bones lose more than 5% of their bone density, then a different medication may be needed. This concludes the video. Thank you for watching. Comment below on any medical topics you are interested in learning more about.